Welcome back everybody to the Seattle Sonics, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K22. We're going to continue the early portion here of season number three with a lot of stuff in today's episode, including our very first prospect profiles of the season as we will finally get our first look at the upcoming draft class. Through the first 20 games of the year, our Sonics have been solid. 11-9 is our record. We're currently the sixth seed in the Western Conference. So not great, not bad, just pretty mediocre up to this point, I would say. So let's get right into the prospect profile. We're going to be looking at, as of now, arguably the 10 best players in this draft class. And obviously, players' stocks will go up and down, but here are the early portions of scouting season. These are the top projected players in this upcoming draft class, and many of whom will be regarded as blue chip prospects when it's all said and done. So right now, the number one pick, I think, is a debate between two players. The first one is combo guard Antoine Ingram of Chaminade Prep in St. Louis. This is the same school that Bradley Beal and Jason Tatum went to, so there is definitely some basketball bloodline here. Antoine Ingram is an extraordinarily fun player, a human highlight film, the heavy favorite to win uh, this year's high school basketball player of the year. I mean, he is just a walking bucket. On the court, it's hard to find weaknesses in Ingram's game. Great scorer, very solid playmaker, very solid defender, great athleticism. However, some coaches and scouts have deemed him as a diva and as a questionable attitude. So as of right now, that's really the only thing that keeps him out of surefire number one pick range. And another reason why he's not the surefire number one pick right now is because of this kid, Prince Ezek Quizelli out of Kansas. Ezek Quizelli is a really unique player of a really unique story. He comes from Yaoundé, Cameroon, the same hometown that former Kansas Jayhawk Joel Embiid is from. Ezek Quizelli is a really fun player. He doesn't really score well inside, needs to do better at scoring in contact, but he's a knockdown shooter, particularly from three. He's a good playmaker, versatile defender, and has solid athleticism. I don't think he is the ceiling that Antoine Ingram has, but I think he's right up there talent-wise. In a draft class that is loaded with foreign-born players, the top European projected to go in this class is a Latvian forward by the name of Vesislavs Zvenmanis. This kid has all the tools to be a superstar, and in my opinion, is the best European prospect to enter the NBA since Luka Doncic. He's a 6'10 forward who has a great feel for the game. He's phenomenal on offense. He can drive to the basket. He can create his own shot. He has a good three-pointer, good playmaker, pretty good defender. The athleticism is very subpar, much like Luka Doncic, but I think this kid has all the intangibles to be a great, great player at the next level. So, of course, one of the big changes to the NBA draft a couple years ago was letting kids straight out of high school enter the league. We talked about Antoine Ingram from Chaminade Prep. He's probably the top high schooler in the class, but not far behind him is A.J. Alexander from Westtown School in Norristown, Pennsylvania. Alexander is a man amongst boys. He is an NBA body already as a high school senior. Now, he still has a lot of work to do. He's a fairly raw player, but at 6'9", 230, he already has the build to be very good. He's not a great scorer, particularly from three, but he is pretty good on the defensive end of the floor and has a lot of athleticism. So I think he's a little bit more raw, but he could be really good. Another player who's raw but can also be very good is Italian forward Cesio De Sico. De Sico is a phenomenal defender. He's pretty much Chance Dumas from last year's draft class, but on steroids. He has all NBA defense as a rookie, great athleticism, but offensively, he has a lot of work to do. He's not a great shooter, average playmaker, but defensively, he's going to be a stud. And if DeSico can improve his offensive game, look out. He's got a chance to be one of the best players in this draft class. From Duke University, you know the Blue Devils breed top-tier talent. And forward Jamar Sherman is the next in line. Sherman is a very different player to the player we just talked about in Sencio DeSico, yet both of them are very good. Sherman is more gifted on the offensive end of the floor. Now, he's not a total liability on his defense, especially with his frame and wingspan, but he can get to the basket. He is a knockdown three-point shooter. He needs to improve the rest of his game defensively below average. He's not a great mid-range shooter, not a great playmaker, but he does have top-tier athleticism, and he's someone who is a fairly low floor but a very high ceiling. Next up, we have center Uzoma Chukumareji out of Georgetown. 
If you've been following along with this series, there's a good chance you recognize that last name. He has a couple brothers who are already in the league with seven foot six bag man Buama Chukumureji on the Oklahoma City Thunder and five foot six point guard Dukalu Chukumureji as the point guard of the Phoenix Suns. Well, Uzoma here is probably the most normal sized of the group, only standing at seven foot tall. I know, right? How short. So Uzoma Chukwumereji is not quite as big as his older brother Buama, but I think he's actually a more skilled player, which will certainly go to his advantage. Both of his older brothers went to Villanova, but Uzoma here decided to go on his own path with Georgetown, where he has flourished under head coach Patrick Ewing, and I think Ewing is a perfect mentor for Uzoma. Obviously, Ewing is one of the all-time great centers in the NBA, so learning under him is certainly an asset. From the University of Virginia, we look at Cameron Hunter, who has had a really good season this year for the Cavaliers. Hunter is a very high floor player who has made an instant impact since coming in on the Virginia campus. Unlike a lot of these other top players in this draft class, Hunter was not a five-star recruit. He has developed very well under head coach Tony Bennett, minus the three-point shot. He doesn't have much of a line ball. But the rest of his game is pretty much complete. So if he can develop a three-point shot, look out. He's got a chance to be real good. The final two players we're going to look at today are both international-born centers. As we start with Timbaku Turominko, a native of China. This is a highly skilled offensive player. Obviously, as we transition to a modern NBA style of offense, you need centers who can stretch the floor, which is exactly what Turominko can do. He's a little bit inconsistent as a shooter, but he does have an all-right three-point shot. He needs to improve on the defensive end of the floor. That's his big weakness, but with phenomenal athleticism, I do think he is the ceiling to be really good. Another talented international-born center is Minka Afamefuna from Nigeria. He's a little bit more of a traditional low-post center, so I don't think he has as high of a ceiling as Toraminko, but I still think Afamefuna here still has a shot to be really good. He doesn't totally lack perimeter skills. He does have a little bit of a jumper, as you can see there. But he does need to improve on offense. He's nowhere near as skilled as Toromenko, but defensively, he's a lot better. He's great down low. He has the versatility to play on the perimeter, added on with great athleticism. I think Afamefuna could be really, really special. Now, at first glance, you might think the Sonics are not going to get any of those players because they're all projected to go really high. Not so fast! The Los Angeles Lakers have done really badly this year, and the Sonics had their draft pick, which is currently projected at 6th overall. Cecio De Sico and Vesislav Zvenmanis are currently the two players projected to go to the Sonics. Now, obviously, it's very early in the season, but the Lakers are not great. They're only 6-12. and 12. They still have LeBron and AD, but the rest of this team is very shaky, and there's a reason why I'm optimistic that the Lakers are going to continue to struggle. They have the second worst point differential in the NBA, so I think that's a sign that they might be a little bit worse than their already poor record suggests. So that concludes the prospect profile. Now as we talk about the main team, there are a couple storylines, including the injury of Chance Dumas, who's going to be out four to six months, which certainly sucks. And then we've been really hinting at it since the start of the season, a possible trade involving one of our guards, Davion Mitchell, Jordan Poole, and RJ Hampton. I think we're finally going to make our move next episode, so make sure to stay on the lookout for that. I wanted to play against the Denver Nuggets because they've had a really good season despite losing Nikola Jokic. So as I simulated forward, we got some injury news. And when I saw Buzz Wigington's name, I got a heart attack, but it's just a sore left ankle, so he's totally fine. The Rockets offer is this trade, Taylor Horton Tucker for Cam Reddish. I'm probably the only non-Lakers fan who think Taylor Horton Tucker is actually a pretty good basketball player, but I'm not going to do that trade because obviously Cam Reddish is still a core piece of our future. As we would go 2-1 in the games we sim, pretty much as expected. So now hopping into this game against the Nikola Jokic-less Denver Nuggets, who are led by Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. As here's the rookie, Kyrol Story, trying to let it fly. No good, but it's tipped in by Buzz Wigington Jr., the hopefully first-time All-Star this coming season. Sonics up big early. They lead 4-0. There's Oscar J. Basilin flying inside for the slam. All Seattle up to this point. They now lead 8-0. A very cold start for the Nuggets offense. Jamal Murray fadeaway 3 is good. That will put the Nuggets on the board finally as it's now 3-8. Here's Cairo Story with the drive and the finish! Cairo Story going upstairs where Grandma hides the cookies. What a slam! 
by Kyrill Stewart. If he keeps at his current pace, there's no way he's not in the dunk contest. Michael Porter Jr. with the slam. It looked like Oscar J. Basilin tried to reach from the ball rather than play good defense, and obviously that backfired. 7-12 to 12 now. Thad Young gets it to Jamal Murray, who lets it fly from beyond the arc. The Nuggets quickly back in this game as rolling down two. Davion Mitchell misses the step back. Buzz tips into the hands of Goga Bitad's day. He gets it over to Cairo Story. Trying to fade away here on Michael Porter Jr. Nice move by Cairo Story to extend the Seattle lead up to four. A lot of offense so far. The offense is going to keep on coming. Michael Porter Jr. sinks for Trey Ball as it's now 15 to 18. Seattle still on top. Monte Morris, guarded by Poole, gets it to Nashon Highland off the screen or more commonly known as Bones Highland, who makes the three to tie it up, and then Garrison Matthews on the next possession gets the and one. Yes, Garrison Matthews, what a guy. So the Nuggets now take the lead, 23-20. It's been all Denver the past couple minutes, and they're not going to stop. Bones Highland again from beyond the arc. Denver now leads by six. Now they lead by four, as here is Cantor, guarded by Pirtle. Gets it over to Monte Morris, who lets it fly, and the Nuggets are red hot from deep. This team has great floor spacing, which I think is one of the main reasons why they're still doing really well without Nikola Jokic. The Sonics can also space the floor quite well, as Jordan Poole, possibly playing for his Sonics livelihood, makes the three. 29-27, Morris in the corner for Zeke Nyashi. Heavily contested three. These are the types of shots that are falling for Denver right now. They just cannot miss. When your center hits a heavily contested three in the corner, I don't know what to tell you. 32-29, Seattle trying to get a last second bucket as it's Killer Cam Reddish at the buzzer to bring it down to one off the fadeaway mid-ranger. 32-31, a lot of offense so far. It's been a very fun and high action fill first quarter of basketball as we go into the second. Here's Jamal Murray, gets the screen from Zeke Niaji. That was fine defense by Davion Mitchell, but Niaji's screen was too much. 35-31 now. Murray gets it over to Michael Porter Jr. Back to Murray. Great cut to the basket as the Nuggets now lead by six. Following Seattle possession, they can use a bucket to get some momentum back as RJ Hampton finds a wide open. Kyrill Story, who hits the deep three. That was a couple feet from beyond the arc. 39-36 now. Still a lot of offense here early in the second quarter as Hampton is blocked at the rim. It goes right into the hands of Goga Pitadze who gets the putback as it's now 43-40. Nuggets on top. Drew Williamson gets to Michael Porter Jr. Off the screen. Get mean. That was not bad defense at all there from Kyrell Story. Just a great play by Porter. 46-40. Buzz Wigington with the fadeaway. How are some of these shots falling for both teams? They're both heaving up junk and everything's going in. Here is Adams denied at the rim by Jakob Pertl on the fast break. Buzz Wigington lets it fly from beyond the arc. 11 first half points for Buzz as it's now 48-47. Look at Cairo with the shimmy shimmy. Showing the dance moves to put Seattle back up. 49-48, Denver calls timeout. As clearly Cairo Story's dance moves was a little bit too much for the defense to handle. Denver back up but not for long. Reddish flying inside for a one-handed slam. Showing off some power on that dunk. 52-53, about three minutes to go in the half. Here is Bones Highland driving inside with the flush. When Jamal Murray's been out of the game, Bones Highland has done really well as a microwave scorer for this Nuggets team. Seattle down by one, but Oscar J. Basilin hits the three to put them back up. Oscar leads the way with 15 points in the first half. This is now 56-258. Monte Morris inside for Steven Adams, who immediately ties it up. And just like the first quarter, it's all about offense here in quarter number two. Cam Reddish going to stop, pop, and drop as he makes the three. Now a five-point lead for Seattle. Now they're only up by one. 64-65. Reddish in the corner at the buzzer! Cam Reddish two quarters in a row with a last-second buzzer-beating shot. That concludes the first half. And the three key words about this game, offense, offense, and more offense. There's been an unbelievable amount of scoring in this game, 68-64 as we go into the second half. Now it's 68-70. to Michael Porter Jr. with the corner three. That'll put Denver up top. Now 75-74. Buzz Wigington blocked at the rim. Here comes the Nuggets on the fast break. 
Jamal Murray has it at the top of the key, guarded by Kyrule Story. Finds Michael Porter Jr., who's wide open. I don't know what Davion Mitchell was doing there. You can't leave Porter wide open like that. Is it South 78, 274? Porter in the corner. He's hot. Michael Porter Jr. cannot miss right now. The Seattle Sonics call timeout down by seven, their biggest deficit of the game. Drew Williamson in the corner for Murray, who fools Buzz on the pump fake, hits the floater. And look at that score. The Nuggets now lead by 11 points. 87-76. Great pass by Williamson to Michael Porter Jr., who hits the heavily contested three. The Nuggets now lead by 14. Seattle has to get some shots falling, and they're just not going in. Good rebound, though, there by Cam Reddish, who has a nice step back. Seattle is keeping this game at around the 12-point mark as it's now 94-84. Reddish inside, fadeaway. Nice shot by Cam Reddish as Seattle tries to rebound after at one point being down by 12 points. Monte Morris drives to the basket, and that is great defense by R.J. Hampton. The Sonics are playing a lot better defense in the past minute or so as Jordan Poole lets it fly from beyond the arc. Seattle is coming right back into this game. They're now only down by five. It looked like Nyaji loses it. Morris at the rim, no good. Again, that's R.J. Hampton with the defensive stop. On the other end, Buzz Wickington from the land of beyond. The Sonics bring it down to two. The Nuggets go on a big run, and Seattle answers right back. Bones Highland, no good. Great defense by Porter. The Nuggets could not miss a shot earlier in the quarter. Now they can't make a shot. Reddish with the dunk to tie it at 94. The Sonics are on a 10-0 run right now. The Nuggets would end up scoring four more points to take the lead right back. But Jordan Poole cuts it to one with a corner three. Into the winding moments of the quarter. Step back by Reddish for the lead. It's good. Cam Reddish has gotten a buzzer beater to end all three quarters today. Pretty wild. What a game we've been treated to. 99-98 Sonics up top, and we still have another quarter to go. Nuggets now up 199. As here's Kyrell Story from Steph Curry range. Hits the deep three to put Seattle up top. Both teams now over the century mark in points. As here is Thaddeus Young, blocked by Pirtle, rebounded by Nyaji. In the corner for Jamal Murray, who fools Kyrell Story on the pump fake and gets the game-tying dunk. Knotted up at 102 with eight minutes to go. Here comes Kevin Porter Jr. Step back. Three ball. It's good. Just like how the Nuggets couldn't miss from deep earlier. Now it's the Sonics who are red hot from three. Kyrell Story finds a wide open. Oscar Javis Seelan who connects from deep. Now it's 1-6 to 1-10. A couple minutes later. So Seattle up by two. Here's Bone Highland off the screen for the lead. Bone Highland hits the three. And the Nuggets are back up top. 113 to 112. Cairo Story. Guarded by Michael Porter Jr. Fade away at the rim. Nice shot by Story as the rookie is up to 16 points today. 115 114. Denver up top. Oscar J. Basile in the corner for Davion Mitchell. Mitchell at the shot clock. Nice move for his first points of the game. And Seattle is back up. 115 116. Oscar is double teamed right now. He gets it to a wide open. Killer. Cam. Reddish, who now has 25 points. If you're going to double-team Oscar, I don't know why you would leave Reddish open because he's hot right now. Michael Porter blocked at the rim. What a play by Cam Reddish. That would have timed the game. A huge momentum giver for Seattle. On the other end, Buzz in the corner for a wide open. Davion Mitchell, who makes the three. Seattle up by five with just over two to go. Now they're up by three. Buzz Wigginton guarded by Thaddeus Young. Wigginton backing down on him. Left-handed fadeaway. It's good. Huge shot for Buzz and the Sonics lead by five with just over a minute and a half to go. Porter got by Story drives right by him for the slam and Denver brings it back to a one-score game. On the following possession, Nuggets can tie it and they do. Drew Williamson knocks it up at 124 with about a minute 20 to go. So now the Sonics are going to try to take the lead in the hands of their franchise player. Number 19, Buzz Wigginton, who hits another fadeaway over Young. Seattle back up by two. About 30 seconds to go now. Step back from Story, won't fall. Rebounded by Goga Bitanste, who does not get the putback in the Nuggets' call time. So with 22.8 seconds left, the Nuggets have it down by two. Shot clock unplugged. They have a number of choices here. They can hold and go for a two to tie or a three to win. Or maybe they want to go for a quick shot and foul 
since it's a two-point game, that doesn't really seem likely. So I would imagine they're probably going to hold it unless they get a wide-open look. Porter, fade away, got it! I don't know why he took that shot, but it went in. Huge buckets for Michael Porter Jr. Now with a shade under 16 seconds. The Sonics will get the last shot of the game, and you'll have to assume with some of the junk the Nuggets have been heating up, Seattle is going to hold the ball and dribble out the clock. Six seconds to go. It's Oscar Jabasilin with it. Jabasilin, pump fake over to Kogami Todd. Stay for the win. No good. And we are headed to overtime. I don't think it's ideal if Kogami Todd's day is the one shooting the game winner. But nonetheless, we do have OT. Three basketball. Steven Adams with the layup. The opening points of the OT period to put Denver ahead. 128, 126. Here comes Kevin Porter Jr. Flying inside from a slam. Nice move by KPJ, the Seattle native. This is now 130 to 128. Nuggets up top. Fade away by Buzz Wigington. That'll tie the game up. Nuggets call time at the 243 mark. So overtime has been back and forth as well. Maybe we'll see multiple overtimes in this game. You never know. Buzz is double teamed. He finds a wide open. Davion Mitchell, who hits the three. And the Sonics now lead by three. Steven Adams down low. Blocked by Gokabi Todstay. Seattle running the fast break. Wide open lane. Wide open dunk for Oscar. Jameis Seelan. It's a two-score game. Now it's a three-point game as Williamson rips the ball away from Story. On the other end, Drew Williamson. Pull-up jumper is good. And the Nuggets bring within one. So now it's a still one-point game. 138-139. Oscar misses the layup. Rebound and put back is good. Clutch. Clutch. From Goga Bitad's day as it's a three-point game. Nuggets might look to tie here. Porter, guarded by Story, drives inside. Nice shot. That's not going to tie it, though. 140 to 141. The Nuggets elect not to foul, so Seattle's going to try to dribble out this clock. Story to Mitchell to ice it. No good. Rebounded by the Nuggets. It's picked up by Adams. So with 4.6 seconds to go, Denver is down by one. And they're going to go for the win right here. This is for the ball game. A three-pointer wins it. A two-pointer wins it. Who do you want shooting the shot? It's got to be Porter or Murray. What does Denver have up their sleeve? So Adams will inbound. He gets it to Williamson. Over to Young. Over to Jamal Murray. Who leaves it up to the buzzer. No good. And we have a final. 141 to 140. What a game. What a gritty win from the Seattle Sonics. I feel like Denver could have had a better play than just having Jamal Murray shoot it like eight feet. Heavily contested from beyond the three-point line, but we're not going to complain. This was definitely one of the most hard-fought wins, not just of this season, but of this entire series, taking on a great offensive team like the Denver Nuggets. We stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them the entire game, and obviously in overtime, we pulled away. 26 for Oscar and Buzz, 25 for Reddish, 16 for Story. It wasn't one player who dominated. It was a team effort. Everybody did their part. Everybody contributed, and that's why we won. Now, defensively, it wasn't great. Michael Porter Jr. scored 36 on 6 of 7 three-point shooting. Jamal Murray scored 37. Walked the bench. Bones Highland at 21. Drew Williamson with 13, 5, and 6. I feel like Williamson had more than 13. I thought he played a really good game. So that's where we're going to leave the episode off. We're not going to do any more semi. I do want to play against the Lakers next episode. I want to see how bad they are because of that draft pick. And we've got some fun games coming up against our rivals, the St. Louis Spirits. We also play on Christmas against the Nikola Jokic-led New York Knicks. So a lot of fun things coming up, along with probably a big trade to open up the next episode with one of those three guards. You'll have to see what ends up being. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.